Hi, welcome to the Statics and Dynamics class, which is called MEEN 221 at Texas A&M University. Usually, in, a, in other places, it's probably called Engineering Mechanics 1 or something like that. This has to do with applications of physics mechanics to engineering problems. My name is Arun Srinivasa and I am a professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Texas A&M University. And this course is one of the required courses in Texas A&M and we are going to cover a whole, whole host of things including the idea of how to use our knowledge of statics and dynamics in engineering situations. Okay, so before we go, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to learn from all these tutorials, okay? And this is based on what I think works and you may have a different style, but I'll tell you what I, I think would work for you. The first thing is to keep a notebook for this class, a pen and a calculator beside you. This is important so that you can write things and you can follow along. There's no point in just listening to me. You know, the classic example is that you cannot build muscles by watching an exercise video. You want to build muscles, you have to do the exercise, okay? So that's the bare minimum that you have to, that you have to do. So what I would suggest for now is, that pause this uh, recording, go get a pep, uh, notebook, pencil, uh, calculator, all this stuff, put it next to you so that you are ready to work, okay? Thanks. So did you do that? Did you get uh, a pencil and all of that? Okay, very good. So the trick is, go directly and try the quiz. You know, what the heck, you can see what, what you already know, what you don't know and so on. And then if you got all the quiz questions right, then try the worked examples and then, you know, then come back and watch this video. So what happens is because you have tried the examples, you already know what are the things you know, what are the things you don't know. And it will help you uh, go through the video with much more intent. So you will learn actually what to focus on. Okay. And then come back and listen to this tutorial. Trust me, it will work much better for you. Okay. Try that. Very good. Okay, so first thing is, what is this course about? Well, why should you learn all the statics and dynamics and all this stuff? So for that, we are going to look at a big picture. That is, we are going to start with, what does an engineer do? I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of engineer, but what does an engineer do? Okay, so what's a core task? So, uh, you know, the first thing we start out with is, what do we need? Okay, this is called a need analysis or a need statement. That's what starts the task. So, our first thing that an engineer, engineer does is identify societal needs. For example, today, one of, the, one of the challenges that we are facing is availability of clean water. So, as an engineer, you would say, okay, you know, society needs clean water. What are we going to do about it? So, the next question is, what are the restrictions? That is, figure out the constraints on this. So, for example, the constraints could be economic constraints. Economic constraints means, you know, how much money you have and so on and so forth. Then it could be resource constraints. Right? Or it could be cultural constraints. any of these things okay so i want you to understand that this is something that you have to account for as an engineer then you have to think about how do we carry out this task for this you have to find a product or product process that addresses this need while satisfying the constraint so you have identified the need you know the constraint so now it's up to engineers to find out products or processes to satisfy this thing in order to do this you have to use your knowledge of physics, mathematics, experimentation, correlations, experience, all kinds of things to figure this out. Okay, so this is the core task of an engineer. Very good. So how do you do this? So for example, one of the critical elements of all the things that we do have to do with public safety. So I'm going to show you, for example, with this particular uh, video, you can see that this is a very simple example of a particular device. This device is a wheelchair lift. This is to get a person in a wheelchair into the bus. So you can see it has several features. One is you can see the grid here. You can see the, you can see the, what is that? Sorry, I, you know, let me get back. So you can see the grid. You can see the, uh, the piston that opens this thing out. 
and then you can see the lip here the lip is to make sure that if the wheelchair is sitting here uh, there is no problem and then so that they don't fall off and then the lip has to open up so that the wheelchair can get in you can see that the lip will open up shortly okay so you can see a lot of issues that have to do with safety okay so why is it moving so slowly is it obvious to you that it has to move slowly in order for it for uh, in order for you to ensure that it's safe you know you don't want to launch the person in the wheelchair you just have to take them in so let's look at this from what we talked about what are the core tasks of the engineer so what's this what's the societal need it's the ability to get a person in a wheelchair into a bus so that they can go to school okay now what are the constraints look from the bus manufacturer's point of view they don't want something that's really expensive and they want something that's reasonably light and one of the biggest constraints is it has to be safe right so that's why it moves so slowly and it has to be operatable by somebody who is not right next to this thing so that there's there's easy access and so on okay then this particular device is an example so our aim is to meet performance requirements while meeting safety standards so that's a very critical idea and the key element is structural safety design should be able to withstand and transmit the required forces and motions without damaging people or surroundings we will come back again and again to this issue of structural safety that thing okay and the whole idea is about forces and motions so we'll see how that plays a role now comes the question of okay fine now design all of this so where does science come in so the idea is the following real world requirements are very fuzzy you know people have lots of different things and everything is connected to everything else for example the wheelchair lift has to be connected to the bus which is connected to the ground which is connected to all kinds of things so it's very hard for you to figure out what system are we designing there are lots of complicated things that can happen there are unclear and subjective criteria okay there are decisions that have to be made and there is heavy util utilization of word verbal communication so verbal is very important that's one of the things that create problems because people don't exactly mean what they say so this is a complicated thing okay so what do we do we convert all of these real world requirements into figures graphs prototypes charts and plots you can see lots of uh, specific things we do simplifications we do idealizations we do Uh, let's make sure the spelling is right we do we simplify the system by removing system uh, complexities right we do models we do diagnostics we do inferences all of them sit in the interface world in order to utilize all of this you have to do one more step which is called the virtual world here everything is represented as symbols only rules of mathematical logic applies here everything is idealized so the idea is symbolic representation and rules of mathematic idealization isolation of system so i'll remove it from the connection so that it's easier for me to look at the system the reasoning is objective because of the fact that the it is based on mathematical logic and it is the same throughout the world although it can it can represent only certain forms of reasoning but it does that very very well okay and this is where physical laws are used models are used parameters algorithms computations all these things procedures all of them live here and i have deliberately highlighted procedures because we are going to talk about that later okay and this is a core idea so the point is i got to switch from the real world to the interface world interface world to the virtual world and then pop back so moving back and forth between these worlds is very critical if you are a sophomore which is a second year student in engineering you are likely to spend a lot of time in this portion talking about the interface world and the virtual world because we want you to get comfortable doing this part that thing we want you to get comfortable doing that by the time you become a third year student you are starting to work more here because now that you know this you will move here then by the time you get to be a senior this is where all your senior design classes are
All of them sit here. Okay, so you get the idea. Okay, so what's the high level thinking skill that we learn in this class? It is moving between the worlds. How do you move from one of these worlds to the other and quantitative decision making, which means you have to realize that the reason why we do an engineering calculation is to make an informed decision. So every number that you calculate has a decision behind it. So converting numbers into decisions is a very key aspect of engineering. Okay. So converting real to virtual world and virtual to real, we will just do some simple examples. So that's the idea. And the core idea is how to convert verbal, which is the real world example, into virtual world, that is symbolic. Converting verbal to symbolic is a very critical thing. And using the you, tools of science, mathematics and logic to reason in the virtual world. This is what we are going to learn. And translating results in the virtual world into decisions in the real world. So this connection is very important. Taking results and converting into decisions because that's the purpose of calculations. So I wanted to understand. It's not just to see whether the answer is correct in the back of the book. You know, that's what happens. No? But in reality, it is to take that number and make a decision. Okay. Before we go, we're going to talk a little bit about levels at which you are, we are expecting you to work. So this is represented by what is called Bloom's taxonomy. You can see it says knowledge to remember things, to describe or explain things, apply, analyze, evaluate, create, all of them are here. So when I ask you in an exam or a quiz to remember, locate, find, substitute, list, that kind of activities are at the knowledge level, stuff that you can actually remember, memorize. Okay. Understand means can you interpret it? Can you describe it in words? Can you classify it? Can you explain it to somebody else? That's what understand means. Apply means can you take a situation and see how your particular memory, your particular knowledge is able to be applied to that situation. So in this particular case, implement, execute, use. So when you hear a problem, it says use this to do that. Then I'm asking you to do apply level. Analyze is next level higher. Now this, what happens is, I may, ha I may ask you to combine a couple of different pieces of knowledge to apply. This gets to be trickier. Comparing things, this is, this is complicated. Organizing things, this is complicated. So next to that is evaluate, right? This is checking, hypothesizing, uh, critiquing, experimenting, judging, testing, deducing, monitoring, all the stuff sit here. So this should be hypothesizing. And then at the very highest level, design, construct, plan, produce, invent, make. So what happens is as you go from your, from your freshman level, you go up like this. So a third year class is not more complicated than a second year class. It's at a higher level of thinking. So I want you to understand that. Okay. So this is very critical. Now there's another thing which has to do with what happens in the real world, which is that if you are below here, if all you can do is you can memorize stuff, you understand things and you can apply it. You are, these three things would be called lower order thinking skills. And this, you are, you are competing with a computer and in many cases calculator. For example, if all you can do is remember, hey, you know, you can be replaced by Google, no? I mean, because Google has everything that you might remember, Google can also remember, right? So if all you can do is this, it's not likely that you will get a good job among other things. What do you need to be able to do? You need to be able to get you need to be the hot stuff, higher order thinking skills, which means you should be able to analyze, evaluate and create. If you cannot do these three things, analyze, evaluate, create. Those three things are very important. Okay. So just to get you an idea, I've drawn a little, little iceberg. All the stuff below the waterline is not something for which you can get a job. If that's all you can do, there is no point. 
Okay, so I want you to remember this. The other thing to remember is you cannot do the top part without knowing the bottom part. This is necessary but not sufficient. So this is necessary but not enough. And you, this one requires the base. So I wanted to understand that. Okay, very good. So now coming back to statics and dynamics. So up to now we have been talking very broadly, right? So now we are going to look at something very specific. So what is statics and dynamics and where does it fit in? So the fundamental idea is that it is the start of a sequence of courses designed to answer the following question. How to design objects that have controlled and predictable motion? So it has to have two things. First is I should be able to make it go where I want it to go. That's controlled motion. The second thing is, if I repeat it, it should do the same thing. That's predictable motion. So it should not do different things every time. So then it's a problem. Okay. So in order to do that, it also has to have the required strength, stiffness and stability. Okay. So, so that it can protect the people and things like that. So it is performance plus structural safety. That's what statics and dynamics, engineering mechanics, all of them, that's what they're about. In summary, the aim of engineering is to identify societal needs and constraints and find ways to address, address them. That's the top level. We need to be able to translate real world information into symbolic representations and vice versa. That's what that's the skill you are trying to learn. Engineering mechanics deals with the transmission of forces and motion. So you translating real world information about forces and motion into symbolic representations and converting the symbolic representations to things in the real world is what statics and dynamics is about. Okay. And the key idea is that if you want to have something that is structurally safe, it has to have three properties. It has to have strength, it has to have stiffness and it has to have stability. Now, whether it should be very stiff or not so very stiff depends upon the situation. But these are the three properties that you have to worry about. Okay. So you got the idea. Thank you.